Hello everyone, and welcome to the first class for Physical Anthropology and Human Evolution. My name is Patrick and I will be your teacher. This is the first online course that we are offering for this class, so I will be posting videos on the class website every week along with discussions and assignments. So if you haven't already, I suggest that you pick up the textbook. This textbook is loose leaf, so if you are going to get the physical copy of the textbook, I recommend that you buy at least a one and a half inch binder for it. The textbook is called A People of the Earth, and it covers um, a vast section of human history, starting from our evolutionary origins um, all the way up to the ancient world, I believe, and possibly a little bit of the modern world. So, let's open this book to page 23, and we will begin today's lesson. And we do ask that you purchase the 14th edition, uh, just because while the 13th and the 12th editions have the same information, um, the page numbers are different, so it'll be a bit more difficult to follow in class. So we're going to go to part one chapter one. Here we are. This chapter is called Beginnings, and this is going to go over um, our early ancestors and um, the early stages of human evolution. Next page. We have human origins. Let's start going over this. So the first group of what we call hominids that we are going to look at are called the Australopithecines. They are the oldest um, recorded ancestor of um, modern day humans. And again on this page we have we have a figure of them, two of them walking through a volcanic ash field. Okay. Um, and this ash field is called Laetoli, um, I believe. it is in Tanzania. So what happened when these, um, these Australopithecines walked through the volcanic ash? Um, it left footprints that are um, 
it's still fossilized there to this day, and that is the, or one of the best pieces of evidence we have that they walked upright um, because of the gap between steps and the positioning of their feet. Um, And other than the ability to walk upright, um, the Australopithecines did not look that different from modern-day apes, um, especially chimpanzees and bonobos, and they had um, roughly the same size brain. So um, while they are our ancestor, they did not possess uh, human intelligence. On page 32, we have a graph that shows um, the divergence between apes and modern-day humans or human um, ancestors. So we don't need to take a look at that in extensive detail right now, but um, later on you may want to go back and look at that graph for your own reference. So. Uh, the best preserved skeleton of an Australopithecine that we have um, is of the species Australopithecus afarensis, and um, her name is Lucy. Um, she was a female Australopithecus who lived in, I believe, East Africa. Um, and the reason she's called Lucy, you don't need to know this, it's just interesting nerdy fact is that um, the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds uh, was playing when her skeleton or rather her fossil was unearthed. Um, now later in the um, evolution of the Australopithecines um, they kind of split off into two main subspecies, the gracile Australopithecines, which um, were what Lucy was. They were uh, more slender, uh, their jawbones weren't as pronounced or as robust, and the other group was called uh, the robust Australopithecines. Um, they possessed the ability to chew up, I believe it was grasses and roots. Um, and that gave them a more pronounced jawline. Um, the difference between the two, um, besides the appearance, was that one, that being the Robust Australopithecines were um, adapted to eat a certain kind of food, while the gracile Australopithecines were um, more flexible when it came to their food intake and what they liked to eat. But all of the fossil evidence points to the robust Australopithecines going extinct around the time of our first member of the genus Homo, which is the genus that we belong to. They died off around the same time that Homo habilis came onto the scene. Well, the most prominent theory is that the gracile Australopithecines evolved into Homo habilis, or at least one um, subspecies of them did, and thus 
eventually evolved into us. Um, there is some evidence that the gracile um, australopithecines that were around, excuse me, not the gracile, the uh, robust uh, australopithecines that were around at the time of Homo habilis uh, came into conflict with Homo habilis. Um, and some have even theorized that Homo habilis may have eaten or hunted robust australopithecines. As Homo habilis was the first member of our species due to the fact that um, they were the first member, as far as we can tell, that um, worked with and built stone and bone tools. Um, because there may be some evidence that um, the Australopithecines, uh, the gracile and the robust Australopithecines, used tools, but they would have used um, pre-existing tools that they found in their um, environment. Um, kind of like how chimpanzees do today with using um, sticks to go into ant hills and termite mounds. and um, other old world monkeys and apes using stones to crush open nuts. Um, Homo habilis uh, created tools that would require um, considerable critical thinking skills and foresight. So being able to plan a, a couple steps ahead um, when creating these tools instead of just creating them with one strike, or just picking them up. And that's what separates our uh, genus from other apes, or part of what separates us, is the ability to uh, create tools. So, for this class, end the lecture there. And um, for today's assignment, I want you to um, answer a couple questions in the form of a quiz um, that will be available on the website. Don't worry, it won't be graded like a quiz or a test, it's just in multiple choice format. Um, so it's going to cover uh, what we just did, so the Australopithecines and then their divergence into two species. And uh, it's also going to cover, I believe there's only one question about Homo habilis on there. Um, that will be due before the next video is uploaded, so you have plenty of time to get that assignment in, and um, you can use your book to answer the questions on the assignment. You won't be docked points for that. Um, and the computer program will automatically grade your quiz so you won't have to wait for me to grade it. I've already put in the answer key in the computer and it should tell you your grade um, and update your overall class grade after um, you finish the quiz. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. I hope it was interesting and informative. Um, I look forward to interacting with you throughout the semester. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send me a message on the class website and I will respond as quickly as possible. Or you can leave your questions in the comments of this video once it's been uploaded. Okay, well, uh, just make sure to complete that assignment on time and I will see you guys next time.